In this episode, we finish the assembly of the 1200 wheel horsepower R35 GTR VR38 block. The pistons and rods get installed in preparation to mount the heads, the middle and lower oil pans, as well as the ancillary items and engine covers. When we last left off, we had just received the fully balanced rotating assembly back from the machine shop and the piston rings were gapped for each cylinder. Now that we're ready for final assembly, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we have the crank sprocket and the harmonic balancer bolt, which we'll be using later on to turn the crank. Just double checking everything on the block to make sure that we haven't missed anything so far. Here we have all the rods and pistons labeled and lined up for each cylinder. If you remember from the last episode, the piston rings were gapped and measured and checked against each cylinder, so it's important to have them in the correct order. First, we're using the ARP assembly lube for the wrist pins so that we can install the connecting rods to the pistons. They will then be held in by the wrist pin clips. You can see in the background that a number of them have already been assembled and ready to go into the block. Next up is the piston rings that were gapped in the last episode. These have a specific order so follow the instructions that you get with your piston kit. In my case the top ring didn't have any marking so it could be installed either way. The second ring had a dot so that went in with the dot facing up and the oil ring rails have a spacer in between them. The rings were also rotated as per the instructions that came with the kit, so the gaps were roughly 45 degrees apart. And here we have the finished product. All of the piston rings are now set in place and the pistons and rods are ready to be dropped into the motor. Before they go in, we have to get the rod bearings on, which are all OEM Nissan items. This was done by using the manual to check tables for big and bore size against the crank's journal diameter to purchase the right sized and grade bearings. After that, we apply some engine oil to the cylinder walls to reduce friction so the pistons can easily slide in. The piston rings and skirt is also lubed up. The next step is to simply push the piston and rod into each of the cylinder and in our case, we're using a ring compressor tool, which ensures the piston rings stay in place 
and don't get damaged on the way down. And just like that, it's easily pushed in. The block is then rotated so that the rod bolts can be torqued down. These R35 rod bolts require 100 foot-pound of torque. First a bit of hand tightening before the big torque wrench comes out to get them to 100 foot pound. That's one cylinder down and five more to go. You can see here that we are still using plastic gauge again to check clearance because it's really quick compared to manual measurements. The rod cap goes on and we torque this down to check the clearance. Look at that, that's perfect. And here it is for reference. So now we just rinse and repeat to finish all of the other cylinders. These are the stock Nissan rod bearings. There's a couple of extra grades just in case we needed to get them a little bit more loose, but we didn't need it in this case. I like how the Manly rods have GTR labeled on it. 
it's all in the detail. The crank key is on, as well as the crank sprocket and the harmonic balancer bolt, which we'll leave there until the harmonic balancer arrives. So there you have it, we're all done. We now have a forged short block capable of over 1200 wheel horsepower, with the only limiting factor being the factory crank. If the crank was a billet item, this combo would be good for over 1600 wheel horsepower. The next video in the series will install the heads as well as a few other accessories. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe to follow the journey, and I'll catch you in the next one.